Hi, I'm the artist formerly known as Muzzy. <laughs> I've always wanted to introduce myself like that. <laughs> anyway, so we're starting the podcast just a little differently today, as there's kind of something I wanted to talk about before we really get going. So you'll notice in this episode, and kind of going forward, I'm going by a different name. And you might be wondering why that is, and well, I've kind of been re-examining my identity over the last couple years. And I've just kind of come to the realization that the way I've presented myself just doesn't really fit with who I feel I really am. And so coming to that conclusion, I felt this was a good opportunity for change. So with that, I'm going by a new name, uh, one that I just kind of feel better represents who I feel I am. So hi. My name is Mina, and I go by she, her, or they, them pronouns. I might be changing my voice or the way I talk over time, but otherwise I'm the same Nintendo-obsessed, hot-take-given jackass that I've always kind of been. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for kind of listening to me ramble for a little bit, and let's get the show on the road. Hello everyone and welcome to Jump Up Supercast, the only podcast on the internet where we're all broke because of GameStop. I'm Will and joining me this week, Brandon. No, don't, no, I'm not. Saf. Why did I short these stocks? Ills. I am literally a bankrupt head fund. And Mina. I can afford a Switch Pro now. Oh, well, bad news. <laughs> You're going to invest it. You'll be able to get more out of it while you wait. Uh, that is... How, how's everyone doing this week? Uh, well... Good, good, good. good. Yeah, we've, moved, we've, we've moved past the GameStop saga. There's other things going on now in video games. Thank goodness. I was already I sick of it. Um, because you know what I love more than people making money? Corporations making money. Hell yeah. Corporations are people. What are you talking about? They are, my friend. Um, so, uh, that is, uh, we had we had a lot of quarterly earnings reports from people this week, uh, right? From Nintendo and Sony primarily, right? Uh, before we get into numbers, which I will mostly allow Mina to do because it's her passion. Um, th- there, was, there was a couple of little things we learned. Uh, top line from Sony. They don't go into game sales, so not as much for them. They sold four and a half million consoles uh, for PS5s, right? Had their biggest earnings quarter ever, right? Because they were selling PS4s and PS5s, right? And they make mm-hmm. money from, uh, from PSN especially. Um, but the one thing they did reveal is they are selling the PS5 at a loss right now. They're told investors, which lying to investors gets you in a lot of legal trouble. So they're not fibbing, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, which is interesting because obviously we talked a lot about the price of these consoles coming in at launch, right? Mm-hmm. And there was a lot of talk about will PlayStation 5 be more expensive because of all the stuff. And clearly Sony looked and said, well, we are just willing to take the loss to have it be based probably the same as the Series X, right? Yeah, I kind of assumed mm-hmm. we already knew it was selling at a loss, but. Yeah, 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 I mean, like, uh, we had kind of, everyone had assumed that both of these consoles would come in taking loss because that's usually how it goes. Like, mm-hmm. Nintendo is the anomaly there where Nintendo tries to have profitability from day one, but uh, Wii U excluded. But otherwise, um, and I mean, this is the norm, right? PS3 yeah. took a big loss. I mean, PS3 was ridiculous, but mm-hmm. PS4 even took a small loss. At the start of the hardware, Xbox One, 360, PS2, you know, this is just this is just how it goes. This Do we have a friends. sense of how much uh, they're losing on each PS5 versus, you know, how much they lost on each PS4? Three? Not four. really, but I, I, I mean, I wouldn't think it's that much more, I guess. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't yeah, they, know. they only said the manufacturing costs were higher than the price point they set it as. That's sort of all that they said. Gotcha. Um, yeah. But... They did also confirm, Microsoft said they did the same thing last week. Hey, don't expect these things to be on store shelves in any major way for at least until the past June. Right? So, Brandon, good luck. <laughs> yeah, oh, whatever. Uh, 4.5 uh, million units, by the way, for context, is the same that the PS4 shipped uh-huh. in November to December 2013. Uh-huh. Um, 
So this had roughly the same launch that the PS4 did, which is kind of yeah. interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, been, both been better. both were supply constrained big time at launch. Yeah. Uh, PS5 seems even more so, but uh, than even PS4 was. But uh, yeah, I mean, I I I I think it is interesting because clear, clearly there there is some sort of constraint because. I would have expected a fairly bigger launch than the PS4, to be honest. Well, I uh, imagine that has to do with COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what I'm saying, though. It seems like, um, you know, clearly because of COVID, like, th- things are different. Um, you know, mm-hmm. manufacturing is clearly not uh, the same. And I, I'm just... I was still just a little surprised, though, that, you know, like, it it, it feels like, and it obviously they could have launched, uh, ha- had it not been for COVID, clearly the demand is there where it just could have been an even bigger launch, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's yeah. just a little shocking that it was, like, just the same as PS4. Yeah. I think this one is not official, but there's been people that are work, that work in sales that have sort of leaked this, that... that Xbox cleared three million for Series X, but didn't clear three and a half million in the similar time frame, right? So, like PS5, they sold more. Right? I don't know if that includes Series S. That might be the difference maker. Who knows? But uh, it does. Um, I do. I think it's very interesting to look at uh, essentially where Sony goes from here, because obviously, like I said, if they don't have things, if they don't have things till June, right? That is a wee length sort of scarcity, right? And with that, sometimes there's almost this like feeding frenzy, right? Because it's known that it's hard to get, you have people working even harder to get it, right? Right. Which sort of feeds into the process. So, I mean, we'll see if by holiday of this year, if if you can (laughs) buy one of those things reasonably, right? But, uh, yeah, like you said, COVID plus the fact that they're going with that that SSD was not being mass manufactured before this thing was put into production. Probably both factored in here. Um, Mina, tell us about Nintendo. What are they getting up to? What are they getting up to? Uh, well, I actually I wasn't done with PlayStation Blue. Right? Oh, okay, so, I apologize. How about it? Uh, the they did have the highest, uh, like the biggest quarter ever in terms of revenue for video mm-hmm. games ever. In the yeah. history of the or entire industry of any company, uh, which is pretty crazy. Uh, clearly, PlayStation is doing very hot right now, mm-hmm. um, especially PSN. You know, a lot of people buying games, a lot of people buying V-Bucks, you know? Uh, yeah. That <laughs> um, is the thing, right? Is like we talk about how they sell at a loss, right? The reason they're able to is because they make so much money for being a platform holder, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I imagine sorry, the I increased MSRP of... Uh, of uh, PS5 games also definitely helps in that regard. Yeah. Um, I bet a lot of people bought accessories on the PS5 because your launch your launch buyers are probably whales. Um, it's, it's funny that it feels like the the state of the industry keeps ramping up because I I feel like you said this like we had the best year ever. You know, Nintendo had the best uh, year ever or quarter ever for their company. Like, you know, I, I feel like that was weeks ago that you said that. Yeah, I mean, they had their best uh, Q2 a couple of weeks back, and now we're about to see they had their best Q3 as well, uh, which yeah. is the Q- holiday Q4. Uh, and, and I mean, I think this year in particular, or I guess last year, I mean, COVID-19, right? That's the big X factor, obviously. And, and that's not to attribute the entire success of the industry to that, right, last year. Uh, like, obviously, we had big things. We had new hardware, we had a like unprecedented success in a game like Animal Crossing, right? Um, but certainly, because people are stuck at home, because uh, you know theaters and theme parks and whatever, all these activities that you could do before are no longer uh, like a thing you can do anymore. Um, people have turned to video games, and and all all of these systems seem to have really really active user bases. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, because I mean, what else are you gonna do, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, but I can't help but feel like, like you know, like people, like yes, this is the COVID bump for sure, right? Mm-hmm. But to me, I have to imagine this is—it's not just like a temporary boost or anything. Like it seems like this is bringing in new people that I'm not sure after making the investments that they've made. Uh, into these platforms like i don't think they're just gonna disappear off the face of the earth right 
Um, mm-hmm. and, and so I think clearly, um, no matter how it came about, I think the industry is expanding. I think more people are getting into uh, video games than ever, right? And I think that's fascinating in of itself. Yeah. I mean, I, if you look at like, and clearly a bunch of other people view that the video games is a, is a growing space, right? Like there was a games industry biz article that was essentially saying, if you if you look at investment, right, from outside people into the video games industry, right, not even including acquisitions, right, like Microsoft buying Bethesda and stuff, there was the biggest amount of investment into the games industry there ever has been last year, right? And like the new, I mean, with Bezos stepping down, the new Amazon guy was on record being like, we're, you know, despite what you may have been hearing, we are, we are continuing to view video games as a big growth space in the future, right? right? So like, I think clearly they're seeing also that like, when these companies are reporting record, you know, numbers, yeah. setting numbers, right? Not even touching mobile, you know, um, they they see a lot of growth down the pike too, you know. I mean, we um, talked about Tencent. I think it was like last week, and that's just yeah. one example of it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, if 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 you have any more things on Sony, speak now or forever hold your peace. Uh, I mean, the only other thing, PS4 only shipped uh, like one and a half million units, which yeah. I was a little surprised. But I mean, not that surprised because they haven't cut the price, which is so weird, right? Yeah. Uh, but normally an end of life PlayStation system does not fall off a cliff this way. Yeah. Um, and certainly the PS4, very vibrant system, right? Yeah. Um, but I, I do. Th- uh, what do you think is attributing to that? I mean, A, I think, I, I think, um, Part, I think a lot of it's price related, right? I think yeah. that I mean the thing is still two ninety nine, right? Uh, by this point in time, the PlayStation Three was one ninety nine. I'm pretty sure, and, mm-hmm. and that was a system that notoriously also took forever to like get down really cheap, right? And pr- generations before that, like things got to ninety nine, which the PS Three never got to, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I did. I I I feel like it, it is interesting because Sony clearly said they want to position PS Four as this like. Uh, additional like they, they, they want to keep ps4 going for a little bit longer yeah right? long tail yeah um just like previous playstations but so far i mean and, and maybe this is just because the ps5 was the hot thing this year um but i i do find it fascinating just how quickly ps4 fell off a cliff i guess hmm. but other than that i think that, that that's about all that was notable oh spider-man's doing really well i think it was at yeah. five four point five, five. Was it 4.1? 4.1 million units. In yeah, 4.1 million units. I, I, I kind of wish they gave the platform split on that. Yeah, because that's either like a 90, like 80% attach rate or like, I don't know, which it might, I mean, there might, might be a really high attach rate for the PS4. It might be, but I, I would bet a lot of people on PS4 bought it as well, right? But yeah, so that's I, what I would I'm, guess is it would probably yeah. be like 60-40. So I, I'm curious. I, I, I wish they had get, given a split between that. I also wish that they'd give it software sales they combine PS5 and PS4, so we don't know like how PS5 in particular software is doing, yeah. which is a shame. But on the whole, PlayStation software is doing crazy numbers. But yeah, uh, that's about it, though. Is it now time for Nintendo? <laughs> now it's time for Nintendo. Oh, boy. Now it's my, now, I mean, I say now it's my turn, even though I was talking mostly previously, too. But <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring it back to Mino. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so... The big thing, the big things, I guess I should say. Obviously, number one, this Nintendo Switch hardware is at 79 million units sold. What does that mean? That means it is already, with less than four years, has sold more than the 3DS in its entire lifespan. Right? Damn. Uh, which, wow. <laughs> RIP I mean, 3DS. RIP 3DS. It's also just about 2 million away from overtaking the GBA, um, which... So, like, that's probably already happened by now, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, or if not, uh, definitely by the end of the fiscal year, by the end of the quor- this quarter, March 31st, it'll pass uh, GBA. But it hasn't yet. Um, it had, a, I mean, this was a massive, massive quarter for, for the Switch hardware. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. No one expected it to be at 80 million units by this point, you know? I mm-hmm. think that w- with it, not even four years in that we're at this point is, I mean, just ludicrous. Right. It's about to pass the PSP. No, it probably did already. Uh, yeah, sure I, I think it. I don't remember the PSP, believe it or not, off the top of my head. But I, it's if it hasn't already, it's very close. Yeah. I think it already did though. Um, yeah. 
pretty sure. Wikipedia says PSP is eighty million. So. Oh, okay, yeah. So it's yeah. So the PSP was ju- just about where GBA is, right? So it's like it's it's gonna pass those two by the end of the by the end of the quarter for sure, right? Nintendo's bare bore bare bone uh, forecast says that they're gonna ship another two and a half million units. Uh, which they kind of winked and nudged at. Uh, we expect, we, we hope to to surpass that again. But yeah, you're gonna surpass that again, yeah. right? Uh, <laughs> so, but at the minimum, they're probably gonna ship another two and a half million units this next quarter. Um, crazy, crazy. I mean, especially when with the quarter they have upcoming, right? They have two special edition hardwares coming: 3D World themed and Rise themed, Monster Hunter Rise themed. Yeah, and those two are big releases in of themselves, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. so. It's going to be, this is a huge, huge quarter for them. Uh, operating profit-wise, this is their biggest ever. Can you believe that? More than the Wii and DS years, mm-hmm. where they had two systems that were on fire concurrently, right? The singular system. Good is, on fire. Um, yeah. <laughs> not, not, not a dumpster fire. like a, That was the one <laughs> afterwards. Yeah. Um, yeah, so do, doing, uh, making more money than they were in the Wii DS era. I mean that that's just crazy. The war uh, chest is back. The war chest just grows ever <laughs> keeps going. Um and then the obviously as a, as always I I find the biggest story of the Switch's success to be the software sales, right? And if, I cannot help but mention Animal Crossing. That's at 31 million units sold. Now, to put that into context, this is on one system in nine months, right? GTA V in 11 months was at 33 million units. Hmm. So, this is tracking on par with Grand Theft Auto V, which launched on two systems at the end of their life cycle when they had pretty big install bases, hmm. right? Obviously, GTA V, the number it reached, Animal Crossing will never reach, right? Mm-hmm. Um the next gen really something into the stratosphere because GTA Five came to two more platform, or three more platforms. Sorry, because yeah. it also came to PC, right? Um, it, and so GTA Five had a long, long tail. Uh, but I mean, for a exclusive game to be selling as fast and as much as Animal Crossing is, there's been nothing like this. This is unprecedented, yeah. right? What is, where does it rank among the other Switch games? Like, what's the it is the highest selling? It is already the second best-selling Switch game. And it's it is behind Mario, Mario Kart, Kart by 2 million. It could overtake Mario Kart for a while. Maybe forever. Who knows? Oh, it's. I mean, last quarter, it sold more than Mario Kart did. Uh, right? Um, yeah. every, I mean, every quarter since its release, it sold more than Mario Kart has. Mm-hmm. Um, but the... Uh, yeah, it, it is close to passing Mario Kart. This might become the best-selling Switch game. Would you have expected that of Animal Crossing? No, nope. no, and here we are, right? Like, like yeah. I mean, this I, it, it is ridiculous. And Animal Crossing, like, this is a game that, like, I, I, I have always contended Animal Crossing on the Switch was always destined to be big because it, it has been big for a while on the DS and 3DS, right? But not this big. <laughs> you know, New Leaf was not, twelve million, right? Yeah, Animal Crossing New Leaf sold twelve million. This has sold more than double. I believe I haven't. I, I forgot to double check this, but I'm pretty sure if it hasn't already, it will soon. It's outsold every other Animal Crossing game combined. Yeah, it, I think I think it has. That's awesome. I mean, it's uh, it's it's. I, I think it's worth. It's, it's also the fifteenth best selling game ever made. Like, yep. So it is. So and Mario Kart, Mario Kart Eight, I think has with with Deluxe and Mario Kart base, Mario Kart Eight base uh, has. Crack the top 10 of all time. Yeah. Number Which, 10 now. Congrats to Mario Kart 8. But also, by the way, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, I'll talk about that in a second, because that is also still impressive, by the way. But, so, like, um, Animal Crossing is on track to pass, like, the entirety of Gen 1 combined. Like, Pokemon, Pokemon Gen 1, I should say. Like, <laughs> red, blue, green, yellow, combine all of those games, Animal Crossing Horizons will probably sell more than all of those games combined. Bigger than Pokemon at its height, you know. A, it is uh, the word phenomenon. We try to avoid using too much, but it's it's there. It's there. It's there. Yeah. Uh, so you know, too bad uh, they made the game bad. Um, they, oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mario Kart, by the way, Mario Kart is 
only a couple million, I think four million now off from selling out selling Mario Kart Wii just deluxe. By itself, yeah. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, just the Switch version. When you add in the Wii version, it's already done that. Yeah. But <laughs> it's on track to pass. And that's within four years of the system. Again, I should say, like we are we are roughly at the halfway point of the system's life cycle, more or less, right? This still this system still has some years to go. And these software sales do not seem like they're slowing down at all. So, like, four years and it's already no- going to be number one, a lot of these games, right? Yeah. That, I mean, big, who big knows game. how high they're going to go. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Another big star is Ring Fit. It's, it's at 8.6 million units, which, so it's almost a 10 million seller, Ring Fit Adventure. Sold, nice. five, sold about 6 million copies just in the last nine months. So clearly, both the pandemic boost and them actually being able to produce this thing more. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah I mean, it's uh, just like Animal Crossing in a way. It's the perfect situation for the Ring Fit. Yeah, absolutely, right? Like, you know, you can't go to a gym, right? And Ring Fit is a great product by by all means, right? And I think people are taking note of that. And I wonder, do you guys... So a big story of the Switch, surprising to some people, has been just how much better the the uh regular switch has done than the light right mm. despite the light being a hundred dollars cheaper how much do you guys think ring fit has to do with that um uh, probably a good amount not like not a lot not like over yeah pro- probably not like most or even like a lot of like like i mean like like ha- like a good chunk but like i i think like i think ring fit probably has a, a fair bit to do with it though right yeah i mean like, once you know that you don't have that option anymore then then you you kind of get scared of buying the the light at that point when you don't know what the extra might come along that, that you only need you know you know you, you need to detach the joy cons for yeah, exactly. Right. I was um the thing was that, the thing was this light. I always assumed that the light was more targeted for a younger demographic than what the ring fit would be targeted towards. Oh sure, so, yeah. That, 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 I mean, I'm sure that's probably true. I'm sure the light probably is more of a. I, I mean, they said sort of that their goal for the light was to be like the younger sibling console, right? Yeah. Like the second system, the third the system in the family, yeah. Yeah, right? Uh, so you have the main switch. That can do Ring Fit for everyone, right? Like Ring Fit's a game that very much everyone can sort of have their own profile, and Account you can one. all work off of one copy, you know. Yeah. Um. So. Whereas the light, you know, I, you know, when the kids want to play Mario Kart in their bedroom by themselves yeah. individually, right? Yeah. Uh, or <laughs> or, or the, Animal Crossing, that, right? Or, like or Animal, animal Crossing, yeah, Animal Crossing, but yeah, for extremely sure, yeah, not yeah. conducive to that in a way that it that it used to be, you know. Yeah. And, and how so, much do you I, think uh, the fact that they haven't really done enough? Um, special lights contributed to that i wonder i, I like i'm like it's weird they haven't done any special edition light at all right yeah um which i thought they would do a lot more they should point. really take advantage of that i mean i want to buy a light for some reason <laughs> i want to buy one but it's like yeah. it's only and the fucking basic versions that are out there they won't give you a reason and then yeah. they're doing two special editions uh in the next two months so both of them are regular switches yeah right <laughs> uh yeah uh, speaking of though revisions, they did comment to investors that they do not expect expect to announce a new Switch revision anytime soon. Now, anytime soon. To be fair, this is different wording than usual. Yeah, <laughs> it is. And uh, I think it was Reggie, right, that straight up denied that they're making a new 3DS revision. And then the next week there was the 2DS, which is not a 3DS revision. It's the 2DS. It's different. Sneaky guy. Uh-huh. I mean, if you want to go even more ridiculous, the literally two weeks before the 3DS XL was announced at E3, they asked Miyamoto. They were like, uh, are you guys going to do, do a revision to the 3DS? And Miyamoto's answer was, we believe the 3DS hardware is perfect as it is, and we wouldn't change anything about it. And then two weeks later, they announced the 3DS XL. It's like, yeah, perfect. Well, that's why huh? they didn't change anything about it. They left that one and did the new one. Yeah, yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> there was nothing to change. This is just the next drop. Right? You weren't listening uh, properly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, they've, they've been sneaky with their wording before. I think, I think, to be fair, this is, we're in January, right? And I think their focus right now is let's close out this quarter. We have two big releases coming, we have two special edition consoles coming. Yeah. Right. Um, let's focus on that, and then 
come back to us in the new fiscal year, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think Switch Pro wise, I, I, I think it's fair to say this is probably the year. I know we say that a lot, but I think this is the year. <laughs> <laughs> finally the the ghost of 2018 will be vindicated in this year. Uh, and then another quick highlights: uh, Pikmin 3 Deluxe is already the best selling Pikmin game. <laughs> That's, the dumb. game it's literally I d- <laughs> barely even knew it came out you know that like I don't think they advertised maybe they did I just, but it feels like they just shit out the game yeah. <laughs> immediately is the best selling Pikmin game mm-hmm. uh, congrats to it I um, don't know if I should be happy for Pikmin 3 Deluxe or be sad about the rest of the franchise I mean to be fair like it sold about 2 million copies it's going to sell even more than that 3 maybe even higher right mm-hmm. um which is a solid success with by any stretch of the means you know i mean like you know especially yeah. for a game like pikmin that is not, not like really like let's be honest it's not like a mainstream like it's pretty game, niche yeah just... right and so it and it's going to be firmly higher than a lot of uh uh, a lot of other Nintendo games, so I think I, I think still I think Pikmin's performance yeah. is very impressive. Yeah. Um, Hyrule Warriors: Age of Calamity uh, with Japan sold three and a half million copies. It don't even have for that's already the best selling Warriors game, best selling Koei Tecmo game probably. Yeah, it's, um, it's probably past Fire Emblem at this point, right? Because that was the last best selling one. Yeah, so it's like oh you know Koei Tecmo. Uh, <laughs> they, they should be pretty happy about that one. Um, you know, or- Origami King has passed three million. You know, uh, and then of course Breath of the Wild keeps selling. Smash Ultimate keeps selling. Super fucking Mario Party keeps <laughs> selling. Uh, <laughs> what's it? Four, what's it at now? Thirteen point eight two million copies. Almost how, how close is it to doubling the next closest? Right? Because what was eight at? The the next closest is uh, it's I think it's just below ten. I think it's like nine something. Okay, and, and at the pace it's going, like it sells about a million copies every quarter. Um, I, I, this qu- this fiscal year is going to average a little more than that, actually. You know, I think that Super one Mario is- Party may become the next twenty million seller on the system. I think that <laughs> one is especially funny in twenty twenty because we say you know, like COVID people want to play games, right? But what are you doing if you're playing Mario Party by yourself, right? <laughs> and that game has no online that you want to play, right? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I assume it's good for families in COVID, yeah, I guess, and that's yeah. like, you know, like, you, know uh, you yeah. play with your wife, play with the kids, whatever. Uh, play with siblings, Successfully but social distance. It is family. funny though, like, you know, that, that is a game that like, it just baffles the, it, it, that is boggling, you know, it's just ridiculous. All right, uh, so, <laughs> so I have a question. Yeah. Do you think yeah. Rise is going to sell more than World? I wish you didn't ask him this. <laughs> Answer. Mina, Mina ate a lot of a lot of shit about uh, World back in the day. I ate a lot of shit about World <laughs> three years ago. Uh, I will I say, I, guess. Uh, <laughs> I think I am more optimistic on Rise's potential than a lot of people. Um, mm-hmm. I think the X factor here is World will continue to sell well, right? I think Rise coming out, World's not going to stop selling. You know, mm-hmm. um, so lifetime probably not, but I think launch aligned. I think Rise actually has the potential to sell better than World. Um, why? Because Japan alone, the the increase from Monster Hunter World to Monster Hunter Rise in Japan is gonna be big, right? Mm-hmm. We're gonna go from about three and a half, less than three and a half, to probably five million copies. I could be wrong. Monster Hunter has never broken five million copies in Japan so far. But uh, the previous record holder is Monster Hunter Portable 3rd. So it's been a while, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> at at 4.8. But, like, the Switch, the, the state of Switch software, especially in Japan, and the state, uh, like, every single franchise that was on 3DS has done astronomically better on the Switch, right? Mm-hmm. I don't see Monster Hunter being an exception to that. Mm-hmm. You know, well, so if, if, and so like the gameplay loop of of a Monster Hunter game works well with a, a handheld. Console. Oh, absolutely! Right, the, the, there's a reason why the portable franchise has always been very successful. Yeah, right. Yeah, they did very well on 3DS. They did very well on PSP. Right. Missions are and, almost designed for like commute long chunks, right? Mm-hmm. Like 15 minutes. You know. Yeah, and, and so knowing that Rise is coming to PC, right? 
I feel like Monster Hunter Rise being such a good fit for the platform, for the Switch, right? It's a home console, but it's also handheld. So you get your handheld Mon Hunt. It's going to do really, really well in Japan. The Switch... The Switch's install base in the United States, like people say, oh, Monster Hunter did really well in the West, so how can you do better than that, right? Monster Hunter... I mean, the Switch's active install base on in the United States is going is bigger when Rise comes out. It is bigger right now than when PS4's was when Monster Hunter World came out, you know? Um... And, and obviously that's the case with software too, right? Software does really, really well. So software does really, really well in the United States, right? Yeah. Sure. Um, and and I think another key area, people undercut it. People say, oh, Monster Hunter World is a big success because of the West. True, but also it was a big, really big success because of Asia, right? Monster Hunter World did really, really, really well in Asia. Guess what is doing way better in software sales in Asia than PS4 was at the time? The Switch, right? I feel like the pieces are in place that the Switch and PC versions of Monster Hunter Rise could do better than Monster Hunter World on PS4, Xbox One, PC. Mm-hmm. I think it's possible. But at, at a bare minimum, it will be the second best on Capcom game ever. I am pretty confident making that. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, speaking of Capcom news, really quickly, just want to let everyone know the tall vampire lady is nine foot six inches. Use that as you will. True. This oh, is, my. Uh, this, did you see how many retweets and likes and everything that got? Oh, it's <laughs> wild. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's Ben. My whole Twitter feed is is nothing but that lady. Now. Big big vampire lady. She's uh. You know, they she, gave her a name, but I can't pronounce it. She she is gonna lady. lead Resident Evil Village to being the best line. <laughs> yeah, <That's> sad. <laughs> <laughs> the power of horny. Uh, really. Uh, there it is. So, uh, anyway, that, that's pretty stuff? much Sorry. the Nintendo numbers, though. Okay. Um, there it is. Big uh, quarter. <laughs> big, big. A lot to get. Clearly, they did a lot. Um, oh, sorry. Real quick, 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 quick things. So, uh, Smash Ultimate, uh, Breath of the Wild, uh, Mario Odyssey, and Pokemon Sword and Shield all passed 20 million units in the last quarter. Oh. So, Congratulations. We're all going to go. That's the first Pokemon since Gold and Silver. Yep, first yep. Pokemon since Gold and Silver to reach that milestone. Yep. Yeah, uh, there it is. Uh, moving on from from those, there's one more bit of of business. Actually, there's a couple more pieces of business. Uh, Gearbox is being acquired um, by what's the name of the company? Uh, Embracer Group. Embracer Group, who own THQ Nordic, they own Coke Media, they own uh saber interactive they own like seven different video game companies right Mm. um but the thing i the thing i'm curious about right is what do you think is the most valuable asset you would get if you bought gearbox borderlands Borderlands. i would assume borderlands but 2k is still publishing borderlands and to confirm they will continue to work with gearbox to publish borderlands yeah so i guess this is almost purely for just the workforce, right? Because I mean, maybe well, they, to maybe be fair, they see like, Battleborn the, as having a big IP, right? Uh, maybe Duke Nukem's coming back, but well, I, I I imagine that despite 2K publishing Borderlands, they'll get it. Assuredly, Gearbox makes a lot of money from yeah. it. Yes, right. Yeah, and so now that money uh, will go to Embracer Group. Even if they're not publishing it, they're still going to make a shit ton of money off of Borderlands. I'm right. very curious how the Borderlands movie factors into that, like, money cut-wise. Because that's, that's I happening. I forgot they were making a movie. Kevin Hart's going to be Roland. Um, yeah. Because, like, I, yeah. I think Embracer Group, like, invested enough for them to do, to fund projects for the next six years. So it's definitely yeah. going to be interesting to see, like, what sort of new projects or ideas uh, Gearbox will come up with. Well, Although, and worth noting, Gearbox is also a publishing house, right? Yeah. So, mm-hmm. like, they publish random games, like I think Bulletstorm? Question mark. Yes, um, they did. Yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah. Godfall, right? Yeah. Um. So, so th- they are a publishing house. In a, in a there is value there. Yeah. I've said that word too many times in this podcast. Um. There's. Uh. They, worth noting, they are keeping Randy Pitchford around, <laughs> despite a lot of stuff floating around uh, about that dude. So he's still he's still doing it. Um. And then, uh, also speaking of Battleborn, you know, you, it, it closed down a couple of days ago. You missed your chance to get on the MOBA esports inspired hero shooter looter action. <laughs> um, so you can no longer even play the single player of that game. Yeah, 
Wow. I, I thought that game was dead already, like a long time ago. They announced well, that it was it, the servers the were ago. still up. Yeah. They announced a year ago that yeah, but they the servers are finally dead now. You cannot play any. I, I, you cannot play Battle at all. Yeah. No. Your copy's worthless. Uh, so I, I am yes. curious if oh. they if this will try this if they will ma- well because it's not like they didn't make a low amount of video games right but f- from Borderlands two to Borderlands three they didn't really have a hit right and there was yeah. a nine year gap in the middle there so I wonder if they were sort of in more of a position to be acquired because like you know so I've said they get funding for six years I think they said specifically this one point three billion dollar purchase. You get three three hundred million now, a billion if you meet your targets. Is is yeah. the way it's set up. So I'm very curious if, if we'll see any them try to sort of speed up the process. Uh, not unlike a company that seems to be failing to do so at Blizzard, because we got confirmation. Oh, wait, can we talk about can oh, we talk sorry. about Embracer Group still? Because they also acquired through their Saber label, they acquired Asper Media, and oh, yeah. I don't know who the fuck that is. Uh, they port they ported the Star Wars games. They ported Civ Six to Switch and um, uh, mobile. Oh, yeah. and console. Um, but more importantly, we found out through this acquisition that Asper Media is working on a big seventy million dollar project. Mm-hmm. And a word on the street is that they are making a new Kotor ills. Oh yeah, <laughs> I read this. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, I asked for it very recently, and it's happening. So, well, wait, happening. seventy million? Didn't they buy seventy? For, didn't they buy us for for like a hundred? Yeah, one hundred fifty well, million. The, uh, this this project is going to cost seventy million in of itself. Yeah, I mean, Come most the triple A triple A games are a hundred million. You know, like yeah, it's. I, I'm kind of surprised that. Um, I think Asper is such a weird choice to make a new Kotor only because as far as I know, they've only ever done porting work. Yeah. yeah. Um, I wonder if Disney was just super impressed with their ports of the... St- like they, I, what did they port? They ported... Um, I forget the names of the games. They're on the Switch. Uh, like Jedi Knight Academy and like things like... Well, things like... Is it, is it like those? I forget. Yeah, yeah. It was Jedi, Jedi Academy Order. and... So- uh, yeah, stuff okay. like that. Something like Jedi. Um, Jedi's in there. I, I wonder if maybe because they had that established partnership with Disney, uh, Disney was like, hey, you should pick the next KOTOR. I guess. <laughs> yeah, how about uh, it? People and like they've been name. coaching... Yeah, sorry? I wonder if they... Well, maybe not. Uh, uh, like I was going to say, I wonder if they feel like KOTOR 3 is not really that big of a deal, but I don't know. I, I feel like they they covet their Star Wars franchise enough, so that's probably not true. And uh, they've been poaching a lot of talent from Bioware, like specifically the 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 MMO team, the the, Bi- the, the Star Wars MMO team, the Old team, Republic the, team, yeah, the Old Republic, yeah. 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 They've been poaching a lot of talent from there, so that'll be interesting to see whenever we whenever we do end up seeing it. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, hopefully, that's, I imagine that's still very early on in the day in the days of it, so that might be waiting a while, but that's exciting. Yeah, um, been waiting my whole life. <laughs> Oh lord! Uh, there's uh the next thing, another thing we're going to be waiting for for at least a year is Overwatch Two, and Diablo. Who knows? Uh, Activision Blizzard confirmed uh, at their investor briefing that Blizzard's not going to have either of those games, but they do have a remaster in development. I do know that much. Um, and uh, I mean, of Diablo Two, you mean, right? Yeah. Well, well they, they haven't confirmed. Well, so we don't know if the D two remaster is this year, and we don't know if that's from the Blizzard side. We just know that more remaster projects are, from Activision Blizzard are coming this year. I think it was um, speculated that Vicarious Visions is do- got brought in to do the D two remaster, but I don't know if that's like just Jason Trier has leaked it. Yeah. Okay. Jason Trier said so. Um, so it's pro- I don't know, but I don't know if that's the one that they're talking about is coming out this year. I guess because yeah. they're they were uh, only bringing them in now. That's a very short turnaround, right? Um. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, uh, but worth mentioning. So, what do you think? You think Overwatch Two is just going to be the single player with Overwatch One multiplayer, like it was originally pitched, or do you think? So they don't know I mean, I'm not. I always imagined part of the thing was like because we know that they're keeping compatibility with Overwatch One, right? Yeah. So inherently, yes, that's still true. I think as far as we know, that is still true. Um, but what it seemed like would, was that 
basically any updates that they were that they would have had in Overwatch for the last two years in terms of new characters, new stages, yeah. new modes, what have you, right? Instead of putting those in Overwatch one, they've been holding off to have a like a Big splurge of new content. Time. Yeah, when Overwatch two comes out, right? That I think people accepted that for that to happen for one year. And then COVID happened, so two years, right? We are going to be going into three years of Overwatch just not having any new content. Yeah. That's pretty lame. That's a surprise. For context, the gap between Destiny and Destiny 2 is three years. And <laughs> in that three-year time span, they Destiny like had a shit ton of content. Yeah, they did right? like eight expansions in those yeah. time frame, too. Including two major expansions, when right? When was the last time they added, like, a character to Overwatch? It was when Overwatch 2 was announced. <laughs> Which was what? 2019. 19? Because that, yeah. that was... Uh, well, because the common belief among people is that Overwatch 2 and Diablo 4 both sort of got announced earlier than they wanted to to cover for the press stuff about China, right? Where they were really oh, in yeah, shit yeah, yeah. for that. Um, who knows if that's true, right? Um, because it just it, you it takes a while to make those CG trailers. You can just turn those out in a month to try to save face. But clearly, I think like Diablo, they were I think pretty honest about hey, this thing is a further out, right? But Overwatch two, I don't know, I can't imagine this was the plan. You know, Overwatch just seems fucking ridiculous though, because it's like this is a game. This, as far as we know, of course, this could change. They could prove me wrong. But as far as we know, this is an iterative sequel. Just by nature of it will still work with Overwatch 1. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. I do not... Drastic. Yeah, I do not understand how this game is going to be taking three years to make. You know? Uh, while they're not supporting Overwatch 1 at all. You know? It's like... I, I just don't understand how this product is ta- like I thought uh, or quite frankly when it was announced I thought oh this will be out for next gen launch this just makes sense timing wise mm, right yeah. and then to know that it's not going to come out not only on launch for the consoles but the entire launch year <laughs> right mm-hmm. the next 12 months it's still not going to be out it, this is just pathetic quite frankly I'm sorry mm. this is, I, Blizzard there seems to be something drastically wrong with Blizzard right now yeah, because because think... because they also had a lot of talent flight in the last couple of years too, right? So I wonder if if those are tied together, right? Like uh, if that thing of like you know, people say like the Blizzard of WoW is not the Blizzard of Overwatch, right? But like the Blizzard of twenty twenty one might not even be twenty fifteen Blizzard, you know? Like it's just it's very um, fraught. I feel like right now. Yeah, it makes me think as though, like, the length of time they've taken. It's like, it's one of those red flags. It's like, maybe they're going to go through a different direction to what they originally stated that they wanted to. Like, with, like, Destiny and Destiny 2. Like, it raises that red flag for me in terms of, like, maybe they're just, that's not working and they're just going to start from scratch or, like, take this to a completely different direction than what they initially promised us, which is, uh, yeah, I don't know how to. I mean, and I'm I'm curious because we know since... When 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 did we first hear the rumbles about Activision getting more involved in Blizzard? I feel like it's been a, at least a year, maybe more than that. Yeah, like, but like after Jason Overwatch Shire 2, around story. that time, right? Yeah, I think it was yeah. definitely before the Overwatch 2 announcement. For sure it was. So yeah. it was at least in twenty nine, sometime in 2019 yeah. at the latest. And mm-hmm. so it's just like, you know, so it's like, I wonder how many of these old dogs are just unable to learn a new trick in terms of putting out games at a quick pace, right? Like... Blizzard was one of those that was like, we're going to take as much time as we want, you know, where like yeah. suddenly it's like, no, you can't. We need you to have something with one of your IPs out every year. Right. Which is why we're going to suck in vicarious visions because you can't do the remaster. Right. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Right. Like we're going to sort of through bits and pieces, make a Frankenstein's blizzard that can fit the model we want you to work in, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was always the direction we assumed they were going to go when they got acquired by Activision or merge yeah. with Activision or whatever, because Blizzard was always this prestige studio that, you know, did what they wanted to do, and yeah. it's not like that anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, speaking of former prestige studios, uh, we BioWare is trying to get back on the saddle because they're oh. just they're playing the hits. If you want to play Mass Effect 1, 2, 3, Mass Effect Legendary Edition is coming out. 
They it was this is maybe the worst kept secret in video games <laughs> before it got announced. <laughs> Um, it is the first three games remastered with new aesthetic, new visuals, right? It looks nice. Uh, well, not new aesthetic. It's it's mostly just polished up, you know. Yeah. Um, and, I think they're making uh, some gameplay changes to Mass Effect One, aren't they? One, yeah. yeah I one imagine a lot will probably have to do with the Mako. Um, oh, the Mako stuff, yeah. Uh, in term- uh, Mako's good. I like the Mako. <laughs> uh, I did too, actually. Um, but you know, they kind of brought it back in Andromeda. I did see like that. It. I, n- yeah. I never played it, but yeah, I saw the vehicle. Um, the two things that are missing from this, first of which is is there's 40 pieces of DLC you're getting with this game, right? But one of them mm. you're not getting is Pinnacle Station, which was actually is for the DLC for the first game was actually made by Bioware. It was made by another studio called Demiurge. Um, turns out backup got corrupted. That's just gone now. They um, lost the source code. That still happens in in 2021. <laughs> oh my God. In uh, 2000, I don't know, when did Mass Effect release? 07, 08, something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they said that uh, it would take it would take them six months to just make it from scratch again. So they just thought, let's be honest, it's not worth it. Um, and I haven't played the DLC, but by all accounts, it seemed like a not very much a non-essential piece of DLC. People did so. not enjoy well, it. I never much, played I the DLC for the first game. So yeah. I, I don't feel like I'm missing much, but I understand the frustration there. Yeah, and then I think the one that I, I, I saw a lot more pouring out of frustration about this than I expected. The the, ma- the multiplayer for Mass Effect 3 is not there. Um, <laughs> is that surprising? I, I can understand like, that. Because they, they, mer- like, they basically required the multiplayer for to get like 100%. Yeah, it was like, and... there's your galaxy readiness bar, right? Yeah. And you, it, you, you added to that by doing multiplayer missions. Mm-hmm. Um, I imagine they retooled that, right? That I, would hope so. I think you could do it without it, but you would have to like do a lot more bits and bobs, right? Like it, the game flow is clearly designed with you contributing that way. Yeah, so hopefully I hated that in the, in the when I played it originally. So I'm not sad about it, but I, I imagine some people, you know, had to use it and then fell in love with it. Maybe or yeah, they just liked I, multiplayer. I saw a thread that was people being like, I spent uh, 500 hours in Mass Effect 3 multiplayer. And I was like, wow, okay. I mean, you know, I'm kind of that with Last of Us multiplayer. So, you know. Um, I, yeah, I, but I've actually heard people go to bat for Last of Us multiplayer. I have not heard fucking, I mean, I'm sure it clearly they exist. But yeah. I mean, I am surprised. That we yeah, awoke the beast. Three has the best gameplay of the three of them. So Yeah, yeah so I guess it would make sense that like yeah. if the gameplay is good, like that translated somewhat. Or at least clearly a fair bit to the multiplayer. Yeah. Yeah. And people yeah, uh, people seem to be very like the, the apparently a lot of people I saw were claiming that it was kind of ahead of the curve on the whole like class based hero based type of shooter, right? Like mm-hmm. it was obviously TF two, but like that like when you played as a Krogan warlord, like it played very different than playing as someone else, and they were all unique and cool. So sad that that's gone. They said that that's one where that that once again we'd be adding about a year and a, to a year and a half to release if they did include it. Um so they just opted not to in the long run. I mean, as a $60 product, this is very, I mean... Oh, it's crazy. This is... I mean, how long is all these... Three, three Mass Effect games, games, all the DLCs, right? Like Most uh, DLCs. Um, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all but one. Uh, <laughs> and then, um, you know, uh, and Mass Effect 1's getting retooled, right? Um, I think clearly this is a product that's, like, already very fully fleshed out. I, I, I never expected the multiplayer, I, but... Yeah, so it's not it's not surprising to me, but yeah, yeah. Uh, May fourteenth, by the way. Sorry, I honestly don't hope that they change very much with Mass Effect One. It it's good to see like how the game originally was, then to have like a... so from the blog post, they were very clear. They were like, "Look, we realized that uh, you know, because one of the biggest things that they said was that uh, they said that one of the biggest things people asked for in this thing was, uh, what are you gonna do about Mass Effect One? Because it, it is aged po- more poorly than the previous ones, right?" But they said there's also a lot of people who claim Mass Effect 1 is their favorite, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and so they were like, when redoing it, like, treading that line between modernizing it but not getting rid of what makes people like Mass Effect 1 so much, right? Um, that was very hard to do. And so it, it actually strays more towards keeping the, the original, right? Yeah. The, like, the things they retooled are, they said, they were like, we we changed how the camera controls. Uh, we 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 made the gunplay feel a little bit better, right? Um, stuff like that. But it seems to be like tweaks, not like we're not cutting game out game changes. Lights, you know, yeah. that's heartening. Then I mean, the one thing I I would have wanted changed was that the loading screens were shortened. But 
Hopefully, <laughs> not hanging out in the elevator for as long. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, and they, that is something that they pointed out, actually. Yeah. They said uh, that the elevators, uh, the elevator scenes are only like 15 seconds now versus a minute before, yeah. and you can skip them. Uh, for, I, I assume that's a... I assume that's a next-gen feature, skipping Probably. the... Yeah the cutscene but yeah or an ssd feature but um uh yeah like uh and they said that so they'd improve aiming controls they'd improve weapon balance sound effects uh just like input right so like just the game just, so like it and, and then they changed squad behavior cover behavior and cameras so it, it's tweaks right it's not game changing but it just makes the game play better and i think i think that's that's totally fine yeah, yeah. And I have to say, uh, we, we've done on Bioware a lot uh, to, to introduce this segment, but uh, I, I, all their messaging on the, on this in particular, I think, has been very good and honest, right? Like, I think there's some companies when you sort of cut content, you sort of have the instinct to be like, well, we view the additions we've made as, you know, really worth it and blah, 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 right? Where, like, for these things that, that were getting cut, they were very clear, like, we wanted them to, we get it. But here's the reasoning we had behind it. And I think most people say, you know what? That's fair, actually. Right. Like, I understand why you made these decisions, even if they are disappointed. So, like, mm-hmm. good on them. Right. It, extremely the opposite tone of, like, Anthem, you know, in the build up to that. Um, so, good job. Uh, you know, it was a master of messaging. Ooh. Phil Harrison and the team at Stadia. Who... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Who announced this week, hey, uh, our first parties were shutting down the initiative to do first party Stadia games. Um, Seemingly, a couple of developers found out literally on Twitter. Um, So, good. Uh, I love that. uh, So, they said currently the plan for Stadia is that they, their claim is they want to continue to strengthen third party relationships and get games on Stadia through that way. And they want to shop around the tech of Stadia for people to utilize for their own games right so i don't know how that manifests uh because I, I know that like for like resident evil cloud edition around switch they're like using someone else's proprietary technology right yeah um so i wonder if, if like that's their sort of end goal i'm not really clear but um you know killed by google.com might be getting a new entry to it <laughs> relatively soon yep. yeah. um and it's not shocking or surprising but yeah. yeah uh so, yeah, it feels bad that people lost their jobs, obviously, right? Um, and Phil Harrison was again free for three, three for three. PS3, Xbox One, Stadia. You can't. I mean, uh, you can't ask. For At that. this point, do we have to consider that he works for Nintendo this whole time? <laughs> yeah, you know, he's a sleeper agent. He was a sleeper for for agent. He was an imposter. Or, or or he works for Steam or something. You know, yeah. Valve. Like he's he's the last agent of Sega. No one's told him to stop his yeah. operation. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know. So that's that's a bummer, but there it is. Uh, I mean, Stadia is a shit ass product. I mean, like, it, the funny thing is, it works really well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? like the tech behind uh, it is good. Uh, but it is a shit ass product in that, like, they they don't offer any compelling reason for me to use the service. Yeah. Right, mm-hmm. like the the game library just isn't there. Like, it's kind of it's like, um, I mean, you can't really use it that well on mobile yet, yeah. which I feel like is like. The main reason you would want to use Stadia is to play on like a tablet or your phone, right? Yeah. Um, and that functionality just isn't really there yet. Mm-hmm. Or I think they added it recently. I haven't even bothered though because it stopped, just stopped caring. And it's like Stadia Pro in in particular is such a terrible value proposition. Like it's like it's ten bucks a month, and you get it's essentially like PS Plus where you get two games a month, yeah. right? And it's like and you get four K streaming, which like a lot of houses can't even support. Um, this is like you know I, I, this is it's just a i don't yeah. know people I, I, I mean there's no i don't see the market for this like, yeah it's just the only thing i think is like th- there is a small group of people that like did buy games on stadia right and like you know we will sort of have that question of like what happens when stadia shuts down right we asked when that started and the answer we might get an answer of in a year which is like <laughs> they probably just don't want <laughs> those games luck. anymore uh so. yeah that 60 dollars you spent on that game Oh well. It wasn't real. Um oh well. Uh that is uh you know, but you know what is real every day, every week, every moment of our lives. The list! The list! The list. The list. Follow along in the paste bin below as every week we add a game to an ever growing list of video games. Uh these is I say it every week, 
But I keep saying it because people get confused by this. This is not the greatest games of all time. The fact that Sonic 06 is on this list should be a hint, right? <laughs> Even though it's at the bottom. Um, it Who is asking you these questions. When I bring up the list with people that I know and I talk about where I think is ranked, they're like, why is it in the hundreds? That game's bad. And it's like, <laughs> you bring up the list with people you know? Online. <laughs> people that, you know, it's, Shocking. this is not our secret. Um, people are supposed to listen to this on some, uh, by, it's by some reason. <laughs> um, somehow. Somehow. It is out there. Um, but, uh, we are, so, so that is the thing, right? These are just, these are different games. We add a different game every week, right? We compare apples to oranges very often. We just did a re-rank. So some things have been moved around. Go listen on our Twitch or our YouTube to see what happened there. Um, last week, Brandon, you added Gato Roboto. This week, I believe it is Mina's turn. Hey, What do you have? What do you- so, I'm going to do Ills a favor. Uh, help uh, pitch in towards his his personal list. Uh, <laughs> it's not my uh, list. Uh, well, you know. It, it, it's, it's, my your pro- it's your project, I should yeah. say. Um, I'm going to add Splatoon 1. Okay. Huh. So, I feel weird about adding this game because we have Splatoon 2 on the list. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And I think, I, I, I don't think it's controversial to say Splatoon 2 is a better game in every regard. Right? Yeah. Maybe you could pinpoint to one or two, like, oh, really? The loading screen jumping minigame? Yeah. Squid the, jump, yeah. Squid yeah, jump, yeah. you know. I really like using the map on the Wii U gamepad, right? It's like, I'm sure, I'm sure you did, you know. I'm sure you really cared about tick rates in the original, you know. Uh, <laughs> I forgot about that. Well, fucking, sorry, Splatoon 2 is a better game, right? It is. Um, oh, but, but Kelly and Marie were better. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's Splatoon 1, like, it's... I mean, this is the start of the franchise, right? Yeah. Um, brand new IP on this failure of a console, and it, like, it. if it wasn't for this game, I would have stopped using my Wii U much earlier. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? This, this game single-handedly kept me playing on that dumpster fire of a system for the next year, right? It also helped um, that it was, like, continuously updated. Uh, throughout yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, like at launch, you could say you could argue it was a little bit bare bones, right? Mm-hmm. But um, over time, this game became more feature filled. It became like they added a new mode. They add so a many new weapons. stages, right? A lot of weapons. Uh, and, and and by the end of it, it, it really came out to be like this really fully fleshed out product. Obviously, Splatoon two even from launch was even bigger than Splatoon one, and now it's just sure. massive, right? But um, but still, content wise, Splatoon one it was great, right? I think the one thing I would definitively, and I don't want to make this entirely what's better or worse compared to two, right? But I think it's worth having that context somewhat, right? Sure. Um, I think Splatoon one single player mode is excellent. I I agree. I, th- I think before Octo Expansion, it has the better, better single player. Yeah, obviously Octo Expansion blows it out of the water, uh, <laughs> but it was still very good. And, I and really liked it was the player. surprise factor, right? Like yeah. you just look at this movement system and you think, like, how does this work for what is like almost a platformer, right? But it works super well. Um, yeah, I mean, I, and I, people have said it before, and I, I kind of agree with this take. It, the 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 hero mode, I guess, is what they call it, right? Yeah. If I recall correctly. It had a very like Mario Galaxy esque um, level design behind it, where they would introduce an idea in a level, and and then they would uh, continue to ramp up how they use just that one idea throughout the level until you're just using it in really crazy ways, and then the next level just completely discards that and does something completely new, in, mm-hmm. right? Much um, like and, trash it for me. much. Like <laughs> <laughs> and I, I that design ethos, whatever it's pulled off well, is I love it. I always love that, right? Mm-hmm. And, and I think Splatoon One does that really well, right? Um, this is um, and I think this game should get credit for establishing the baseline of what Splatoon is, right? Like I think the whole concept: you shoot your gun, uh, which acts as both, like you know. In the main mode, the it's not about killing each other necessarily, right? Obviously, it it's happens. good too. Okay. But the the main concept is you want to paint the most ground yeah. uh, in the turf war mode, right? And, and so I think the whole mechanic of you shoot your gun and that both acts as like the environmental thing to uh, help towards your main goal, right? But it also, it's like 
it, it helps you keep control of that because you can swim through it faster. You turn into a squid and you swim through that ink, right? And that's also your reload function, right? And that, that loop of, of shooting, swimming, you know, what? to refill, like, sorry, go on. Well, I, I think it's a very interesting thing because um, I think I remember there was an interview with Miyamoto or someone, right? But they, they the, a big focus they had with Mario is they want to see how much of a moveset can you get out of three buttons, basically. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Splatoon has that same philosophy, right? Really, there's only two buttons you engage, three buttons, right? You jump, you, you dive, you shoot, right? And then, like, sometimes you, you activate your super, right? Like clicking on a stick or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, and so, like, I think that it is a game that is incredibly accessible versus people that aren't first person shooter or third or just shooter people in general because there isn't that sort of like, you know, you don't have to be like dancing across the controller, right? Like, and it, I think it just works really well. You know, like that's that's a challenge to make a, a shooter that works with three buttons because you have to do a lot, but they made it work really well. Yeah, it just it works really well, right? And I think they, I mean, this game turned me into a fan of the genre to some extent, right? Like, I, 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 I appreciate shooters a lot more after playing this game. Like, I, I actually feel like I can play to a somewhat reasonable degree. Okay. <laughs> um, there's also the fact that as well is that this game also benefits from, from the fact that it's incredibly the theme of it. It was very very well done. Like it had this kind of like yes. 90s kind of musical style to it, which is absolutely fantastic. Well, it's funny because like because people like people compare one and two a lot, right? And a lot of people, especially when it launched, that Splatoon two was just a one point five, right? Mm-hmm. But I think it is funny, like, I would say, look, going back especially, I watched people playing Splatoon 1 a while back, it has a very almost like a Nickelodeon Guts style, like, aesthetic, right? Mm-hmm. Like, there's, there's everything's really bright, right? Everything, like, all their guns are very Super Soaker-esque, right? Like, yeah. I, I think it is just, and I think it's very charming, right? I think, like, 2 is a little bit more, like, modern, like, cool, right? Like, where, mm-hmm. where it's more, like, retro fun, you know? Um, so, I agree. I think that, like, the, yeah, it, it is funny. Like the aesthetics difference between one and two is actually quite staggering. Like if you like, it's a lot more than you would think, yeah. right? Um, the, and they do get, like, and this game has a very specific style to it, and that comes across in the music as well, yeah. right? Yeah, um, I think two leaned into hip hop culture a lot. More. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, whereas one um, is more how I don't know how you describe it, but um, it's more. I don't know. I, I really yeah, more pop. So, I mean, someone. I mean, they literally said in in a Splatoon one interview that like from Splatoon one to Splatoon two, the Splat- the Inklings went from being kids to being teens, and I think that that reflects in the aesthetic, right? Like, I think that one is is more kiddy, right? Um, but I think that that works, right? Especially for when for what is the first introduction to this world, right? Like, Inkopolis is a fun place to just hang out in, right? The drawings yeah. are obviously super fun. Um, you know, like it is, it is a first person shooter that like, even though there's not a world that you're exploring, right? Like you're just Mm -hmm. in this lobby and then going to levels, you very much feel like you have a vibe for how this world operates. Right. And that's very hard to do with so little, you know, but they did a great job. Yeah. Anyways. I know of two, because we've had in Squid Sisters. So I don't know where to rank this game though, you know, because it's like. (laughs) I mean, it should be below Splatoon 2, and I think by a decent amount, because I do think Splatoon 2 is just a far better game. I, I do. I personally yeah. do. I know there's people, again, I know there's people out there who prefer the first game. I think that 2 is just better in every regard. And yes, 1 introduced, like, all these things, but it's just, like, I don't know. Like, I have no reason to go back to 1. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. And, and I think that there are a lot of balance warts, in particular, in 1 that got smoothed out in 2, right? Mm-hmm. Like... This is just a, a, a experience thing, right? So there's I don't have hard data on this, right? But I feel like in two, there's a lot more times where like I'm getting killed by something, and I'm like, you know what? That's just like they're using this weapon, right? Rather than like, man, this weapon is is busted, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that it's just a more a much more well balanced game, and like the maps I think are generally like there's a lot of interesting maps in one, but I don't know if a lot of if they're interesting but not necessarily good. You know, and they they also took a lot of the maps in one into two, right? Like, it, I don't even think one has that many like exclusive maps left. And they alter know? a lot of them for two, I think, to like tighten up a lot of stuff. You know, like, um, so. But even even um, really comparing it to, you, I think that the, those are faults. You know. Yeah, but it's still like I mean, 
but it's like not like drastically the worst experience. I said like, it's still a great game, right? It's oh just yeah, like, for sure. Yeah. I just I just wouldn't go back to it. I guess right. All right, uh, better or worse than Hollow Miami? <laughs> Uh, where's Hotline Miami? Give the give the number three. Sixty one. Sixty one. Well, I was Do looking at my like, opinion. I was or, honestly yeah. looking around somewhere above eighty. Above where? Above eighty, like somewhere above eight. Like my the uh, 80, lowest okay. I like, the lowest I can go is eighty. Like I can't see anything lower. But anyway, somewhere above eighty, I'm fine with. Uh, Better or worse than Center Punisher Star Successor. <laughs> <laughs> I would put it. Around the melee area, that is oh. where my brain went as well. I was actually going to say that when I was looking at while you guys were talking, I was like, uh, "My first thought was just below melee, maybe, yeah, probably." I put it below, yeah, yeah. But I think it's better than side above. But I'm fine with putting it below melee. But you know, just... what? I'm okay with putting it above. <laughs> <laughs> Seth. Um... Else, have you you played no, this game, you right? Else? Yeah. I have not played this game. Oh, you're not. Okay. I don't know if to be honest. Okay, so my I'm honest, like, I would want it above brawl. I guess that's where I'm feeling right now, personally. Okay. I don't know I if I want it above psychonauts. Go. You don't want it above psychonauts. Yeah, I don't want it above psychonauts. I don't know if I. Would. Yeah, I don't know if I feel. I haven't played psychonauts, so I can. I, but psychonauts I, is I, a great game. Psychonauts is a is a is a great game, but I think that like. I think the platforming in Psychonauts is mostly good, right? Mm-hmm. Where, but I think that a lot of the other stuff is where it elevates, right? The the, the ideas, the right? The I theme. think Splatoon has really strong ideas and really solid gameplay, right? Like I think I think it's on a high arguably level. it even has solid platforming. <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> um, uh, the the, single, the the that's my hot take: is Splatoon single player is a platformer. Um, I think you're not wrong. Um, I doubt you're but, wrong. I mean, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I don't get wrong. But I've been watching melee clips. And I just, you know, (laughs) got a lot going for it. (laughs) That guy nailed the credits today. Come on. That guy's playing the credits 19 years later. That's pretty good. Better shooting than Uh, Uh, Well, (laughs) Maybe. We have more reason to go back. Think about it. Sweat drop. Uh, Brandon, do you do you do you just not agree with the Bob Brawl thing at all? I, I can go lower, but I'm just um, curious if there was any way you'd be in that. Or are you saying it's better than Wii Sports? I I mean, no. You just hate Brawl. Both Brawl, you know. I don't hate that. The online works a lot better than Brawl. That is true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> you know, some might say it has a better platformer than Brawl. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it feels better to move in Splatoon than it does in Brawl, I'll say that much. Um, That's probably true. My thing when thinking about, when I was thinking about Splatoon, when I was adding it, right? Like, because I'm not the kind of person who really gets into um, big online multiplayer games, you know? Like, yeah. I, I don't really get oh, same. into them. Um, so then I was comparing it to other ones that I've played, right? And then, like, you know, I went down and I saw Overwatch. And I said, ah, I think Overwatch is a little better than Splatoon 1, at least. Um, and then, you know, Left 4 Dead 2 and Smash Brothers Brawl. Like, those are two games that I also got big into the online multiplayer for, right? Um, more not competitive, but just playing with friends. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, Brawl's online was real shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I... And then... Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I, was, I mean, want to put it above Brawl, uh, just thinking about it, right? I mean, there's like a... Like, I would put like Awakening higher, right? But like, I don't want to kill it. Just move Brawl down. I, I guess to me... Well, I also would put it above Left 4 Dead 2, to be fair. I would I know too. I, I, I might... Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, I, and like, I think... Like, if I... My direct comparison to Brawl, the way I'm thinking of it, right? These are both games I would not go back to because they're sequels, right? Uh-huh. I think these are also both games that the one thing I would go back to for is the single player component, right? Sure. Yeah. I yeah. think Splatoon single player is better than Subspace, right? I think Subspace was funny. Subspace? I, I mean, that's the only reason I would go back to Brawl for, right? I have no fucking yeah. other reason to go back to Brawl. What about besides... the coin launcher? That one's pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think, I, I just think Splatoon plays better than Brawl, you know? Um, that's. Yeah, I don't know. Like, it, I think it's just, I think it's a better game. You know what I think does they it for me? Splatfest. Splatfest is genius. You know, just what a yes. what a genius idea. 
What a great idea it was. Yeah. SpongeBob versus Patrick. It happened in a Nintendo game. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I had a. We feel like I felt bad. There was a guy I worked with who still played plays Splatoon for way longer than I did, and he would be like, "Will we get on Splatfest?" And I'd be like, "No, <laughs> I'm not. I'm sorry." Uh, I think me and sorry, Brandon Robbie. played every Splatfest together in the first game. Yeah. Yeah, I went. I was a bad friend. The second game too. <laughs> Almost pretty close, at least. I think there was a couple towards the end that we uh, that we may have missed, but for sure, I know for sure in Splatoon one we played literally every Splatfest, game. and that's a game that me and Brandon in particular had played. Sure, basically like at least once a week for at least a year, right? Yeah. So I'm fine with above brawl is my answer. I mean, I'm fine with yeah. So yeah. So yeah, I think. Sorry, what were you saying? Yeah, I, th- I think I was gonna say maybe Sonic too, but nah, we'll we'll put it below. I mean, I would have put it below above Sonic too, but I know I thought I just figured I'd lose that battle. But <laughs> yeah, put it below. Yeah, put it below Sonic too. All right, that's fine. Okay. I'm not. I'm not opposed to that. All right. So there it is. All right, fifty one. Fifty one. Splatoon one on the list. Splatoon. Uh, surrounding it at uh, forty nine. Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow. Fifty. Sonic the Hedgehog two. As I said, fifty. Splatoon. Fifty one. Super Mario. Super Smash Brothers Brawl 52, Left 4 Dead 2. Wait, I got the numbers wrong. Don't worry yeah, about it. Look did, in the paste bin. Did, did. Uh, <laughs> that is. I need. I need the last word. I need the final phrase. I need I the need, last word. I, so I, who wants to do the plugs? I'll do them. Brandon. What a hero! <laughs> All right, everybody. If you if you enjoy listening to the Jump Up Supercast, uh, make sure you check us out on your favorite podcast listening service of your choice, except for. Spotify. Don't go to Spotify. Go to Spotify. Can we try to get on Spotify? Brandon, let's make it our goal. By the end of... Okay. B- within the next two months, let's try to get on Spotify. Let's try. We might have... You know, it might only be the newest episodes that go up. You might not have the backlog to go to. <laughs> Who knows? But at least, but we'll you know, see. new episodes. Oh, well, we can always see yeah, at the we'll end. See. If you want to see our previous episodes, go to the fucking... Yeah, go to X or Y. True, yeah. true, 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 true. But, uh, yeah, SoundCloud, iTunes, YouTube. You can find new episodes uh, of the... Uh, Jump Up Supercast every single Monday, as well as our our other show, the Jump Up Supercast Game Club, uh, that goes up every other Thursday. Um, and we recently uh, just uploaded an episode about Police Knots. Um, so if you want to hear us talk about that game, go ahead and check that out. And the next game we're playing right now is called The Last Story, um, an Operation Rainfall game. So if you want to check that out, um, just give us a follow, give us a like, give us a share. Feel free to let us know um, what, what you thought about today's news uh, and our opinions. Do you own a Nintendo Switch? Do you own a PS5? Do you own an Xbox Series X? Uh, let us know which ones you own in the comments below and uh, let us know if we rank Splatoon correctly on the list. And uh, if you want to support the podcast, you can do that at patreon.com. Just search Jump Up Supercast and just $1 a month, you get a chance to choose one of our Game Club games every round. You can choose uh, whatever game you want us to play, as long as it is 25 hours or less, according to howlongtobeat.com. So a shout out to them. They didn't sponsor the podcast, but they should. You know, hashtag not an ad, but hashtag also could be an ad. Uh, you can follow <laughs> us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Stay up, at, up to date. Everything Jump Up Supercast related. When we post, you know, the episodes, they'll go on social media. Uh, so give us a follow. You can even check us uh, streaming. From time to time on twitch.tv slash course jump up supercast. Uh, and if you want to just, you know, talk to us, hang out, and play video games there, um, that's the best way to do it. And as always, uh, thank you guys for listening. Thank you everybody for joining. And um, go out there, play video games, and even more importantly, be nice to each other. And Mina, take it away with your final phrase. I don't think I'm the first person to say this. But I'm one of the first people to say this, okay? Uh, this is a minority opinion here. Oh, no. The Nintendo Switch will become the best-selling system of all time. Mark it down. Mark January... No, February 4th, <laughs> 2021. I'm saying it today. It will outsell the Nintendo DS. It will outsell the PS2. This thing is going to be the best-selling system ever.